mushrooms that grow in water. To support Singapore's 3030 vision, we need to equip our students with the right skill set and the state-of-the-art facility. We recognise the urgent need to address Singapore's food challenge and among these initiatives, we are focusing on creating alternative protein as well as upcycling food waste. In this series, we'll explore how innovative technologies and local initiatives are rethinking the way we produce and consume food. Welcome to Future Food, where we explore the food production of tomorrow. Singaporeans have a deep love for food, from hawker centre delights to gourmet cuisine. Let's see what happens when this passion meets innovation. Today, we're at the newly launched Future Food Lab at Singapore Polytechnic, where we'll be meeting interesting folks who are pioneering innovation and collaboration in the area of food technology. Let's go meet them! Hi, my name is Yulin. Hi, I'm Alicia. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is Florence, the industry nice partner that we're working with. And here yeah. are my group mates. Hi, everyone. Can you take a seat? Thank you. Okay, amazing. I see you've got some products over here. This is like our wheat brand noodle that we developed for our bike project. Yeah. So this is a project in which we've been working on. So yeah. Cosmode Health is this mission okay, to address the nutritional needs of Asians. Okay, targeting mainly the aging and diabetes population. But we also do not want to trade off the health of the earth. Therefore, we repurpose food processing waste, which otherwise would be dumped to landfill, and we formulate functional food okay, that can control blood sugar. So, we have already worked with Spend Barley Grains, Singapore's top food processing waste stream, and formulated a noodle that has zero glycemic response or blood sugar response. So, is it like helps with losing weight and stuff? It definitely helps with weight because there are only one gram of carbs. So what? Earlier you mentioned this thing called uh, glycemic in not response. Index. Glycemic response. Like I've heard of low GI foods. How is that similar or different from from that? So glycemic index is an index that measures the blood sugar response to carbohydrates. In the case of the noodles which are looking at here, the carbohydrates is so low that we cannot measure the glycemic index. So we measure response, that means the response of the blood sugar to the food as a whole, not just to the carbs. I see, okay. And earlier you also mentioned this term called functional food. This is a new term to me. Could you maybe elaborate on what that is? Yes, I think functional food is a very new area. Functional food means food that has nutrients that serve a function. In fact, we are really working even beyond functional food. We are driving food as medicine. That's why we are creating a noodle that can enable people to control the blood sugar. And essentially, they are eating medicine without realizing they're eating medicine. Wow, I love this idea. Like, you know, food as medicine. They say that you are what you eat, right? So, there we go. <laughs> the team here are pushing the boundary. Yes, high five to innovation, guys. Yes. Would you like to have a tour around our lab? I would love to. Go. Let's go! So in the Biotran zone, we can take a look at the space where the industrial partner as well as our staff in SP does their own research. Hi Alicia. Hi Mr. Raymond, this is Yulin and she's interested Hi, to know more about what we do in the lab. Sure, come on in Yulin. Thank you. Uh, but just before you come in, I think for safety and compliance, we need to gown up. Sure, no worries. Hi. Right. go. Yes, so I'm Raymond, I'm founder of Microcell and we are a deep tech company specialising in mycelium biomass fermentation. Put it simply, we're growing mushrooms in water for functional foods, biomaterials and active ingredients for skincare. Oh, do you need a skincare ambassador? Oh, uh, yes indeed I do. <laughs> okay, let's focus back yes. on food. Basically, you can see here we have an edible mycelium cell bank. And what we have in here are multiple species of edible mushrooms in which we grow in this form as mycelium. So we don't actually grow the mushroom itself, it's like the body and the roots of the mushroom. So you can see many different species, and each of these have different taste and texture and properties for functional foods. Mm. Now we do this for safety. So we want to ensure that our cultures here are pure cultures, so that we know when we scale it up that we are, we are growing, for example, shiitake mushroom, at the very end, it is shiitake mycelium. Ah. 
Here you can see we grow the mycelium in liquid. How does growing them in liquid and kind of shaking them around help with the growth? So growing them in liquid enables them to absorb nutrients from the liquid media a lot quicker. And so they can grow much faster. In fact, compared to several months, these can grow in three to 10 days. Wow, impressive. And the next step would then be to make it into a large scale cultivation. And I'll introduce you to our student team here who are helping out with the bar reactors for scaling up. Hi, Charlene. Hey. So, do you actually eat the mushrooms that you grow here? Well, of course, but before tasting, we have to run through a series of analytical and microbiological testing so we can ensure that the food that we produce here is safe for consumption. After that, we run through a sensory evaluation. Yes, yeah, so would you like to see how we conduct formulation trials in the kitchen? Yeah, I would love to, and then maybe try some um, of the food that you grow here. Uh, sure, let's go. Let's go. Hey, Dr. Gang, this is Yulin, and she's here to find out more about what we do here. Hello, I'm Anli, the co-founder of Microsocia. Mm -hmm. So here we are formulating plant-based patty using Fipro. Fipro is a clean label ingredient derived by our company by using uh, Okara. Okara is the side stream of soybean and tofu manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. So we are applying biotransformation technology to convert Okara to a flexible, versatile ingredient. Mm -hmm. so this is the group who are working with me on the projects. They have been with me for more than eight months through their LNC program and final year project. This is Esther. Hi Esther, lovely to meet you. So, I'd like to know what your experience has been like working with Microsocia. My experience with Dr. Gang has actually been very, very enriching because uh, she has guided us a lot of uh, things in doing new trials and also in gaining new knowledges about uh, plant-based meat patty and also other plant-based products. As you can see, my team members here, they are actually preparing a new formulation of our plant-based meat patty. In order to do this, we have to use different kind of ingredients and we have about 5 to 10 ingredients here. So after the formulation stage, what's next? After this, we'll be moving on to the sensory evaluation. But before that, we'll need to analyze the texture of our meat patty. I know some of my classmates from another group, they are actually doing testings on their food products. So shall we move on to that area? Just checking out the very interesting instruments you have here. What are they for? Okay, so this is the water activity meter, which is used to determine the water activity value of our product. It measures the amount of free water in our product, which affects its shelf life. So the higher the water activity, the shorter the shelf life? Yes, correct. I see. What about this one over here? So this machine is the near-infrared spectrometer, called the FOSS machine, and it's used to analyse the fat and protein content in our product. Could you show me how it's done? Sure. So this is the sample holder. We will put the sample into the sample holder and then the sample holder will go into the machine. Then we close the machine. And we run the test on the screen. How long does it usually take? Mm, usually less than a minute because it's like a rapid testing. So the results will come out very quickly. Okay. Oh, look. It's done. Yeah, it's done. So as you can see on the results and the screen, the fat content is about 5 and the protein content is about 30. Okay. So after analytical testing, we can narrow down the sensory attributes we wish to evaluate. Shall I take you to the sensory booth now? Is this where we get to taste test the food? Yes, of course. Let's go, follow me! Hi Yulin, I heard from Alicia that you're coming here. I'm Ingwan, and here's the sensory zone where we conduct various tests like triangle tests, pet comparison, dual trio tests, and many more. And these are examples of discrimination tests where we typically run sensory analysis to determine whether there is a potential difference between two or more samples of products. So what's with all the different coloured lights? 
Well, color is part of the appearance attributes, which plays a significant role in consumer preference. Therefore, if multiple products should be compared, potential color differences are often masked by switching to red or green lighting to ensure unbiased comparison. Today, we'll be conducting preference tests. Would you like to try being a sensory panelist? Yes, I would, because that means I get to try some food, right? Yes. Come have a seat. <laughs> So in front of you are the protein bars and you may test the sample from left to right and do remember to key in your preferred sample in the e-form provided here and remember to cleanse your palate after eating uh, samples in between Okay, you may proceed with your tasting session I see that you are done with your tasting session. Thank you for taking part in this sensory evaluation. Mm -hmm. With your feedback given, we will be able to conduct statistical analysis to further improve our existing products. Actually, it was really hard to tell the difference. Can we, can we try it again? Like, you know, for test, we test reliability just to help you out with the research. Ooh, ooh. Oops. Test, we test reliability. Hello? Really good. To find out more about Singapore Poly's goals in helping with food security and sustainability, we had the privilege of speaking with Ms. Georgina Poa, Deputy Principal at Singapore Polytechnic, to gain insights into the institution's pivotal role in advancing food innovation. Hi Georgina, thanks so much for welcoming us to this newly launched Future Food Lab. I mean, the space looks great. Can you tell us a bit more about why Singapore Poly decided to set up the Future Food Lab? Being the sector coordinator of the food manufacturing industry appointed by MOE, we have the responsibility to upgrade our facilities, enhance our capabilities and refresh our programs to ensure that our students get the latest training needed for the industry, especially for today's. We are looking at the Singapore 3030s plan. We are looking at how to uh, enhance our food security and food production in an innovative way. I understand that you bring in food startup companies to collaborate with your students here. And could you tell us more about this program? So our students who opt for this industry now curriculum in their semester two of second year, they start working uh, with industry. We have the space, we needed the capabilities, we needed the facilities, so we identified uh, the right partners. They are all the startups uh, looking at future food, alternative protein, uh, waste vaporization, and so they are now co-located here and together with our staff and our students working on projects to innovate future food. Yeah, I actually tried out the energy bar. It's really delicious. I kind of ate a little bit more than I probably should. Can I eat the, the whole thing? Sure, if you yes. want. Well, thank you so much, Georgina, for taking the time to help us today with the interview. Um, I look forward to seeing more of your students' products being launched on the market. Yes, me too. And please support them. If you see the products in the supermarket, get them, try them and give us a feedback. I sure will. As we conclude our tour, let's take a look at some of the innovative products developed here at the Future Food Lab. It is so exciting to see the startups working alongside with students at Singapore Polytechnic to advance food sustainability and security in Singapore. We've learned about what goes on behind the scenes in food innovation, from research to tests and small batch productions. Thanks for joining us today on Future Food as we continue to explore the future of food sustainability and security in Singapore. In the next episode, we'll be exploring plant-based meat. Till we meet again. Would you be interested in being a sensory panelist? Yes, I would, because it means I get to eat something, right? Yes. Cut. Here's the protein bar. You may taste from left to right. <laughs>